Greetings, Goji Geeks. Now, before I left Japan for G-Fest, I decided to enjoy an old Godzilla classic, Destroy All Monsters. As I watched the film, I was reminded of the Keelax's view of humanity and population, and I made a sudden realization. The Keelax Queen's comments about population reduction for scientific advancement are similar to comments made by human beings in the real world today. Early in the film, when Moonlight SY3 Captain Katsuo Yamabe is confronted with the Queen, she says this. It is my dream to build a new scientific civilization on Earth. In order to build that scientific civilization, we have to sacrifice some lives. At a glance, an alien leader threatening to cut down Earth's supply of humans in a sci-fi flick isn't anything unusual. It's what many aliens have aspired to do in such films after all. However, it's the phrasing of the Keelat Queen's statement that holds resonance. According to her, the Earth will be a better and more scientifically flourishing planet only if the number of people on it are reduced. In real-world terms, this idea is known as population control, and in extreme cases, depopulation. The thought is that, as population increases, so too will many undesirable and anti-progressive side effects, such as famine, disease, social upheaval, and environmental destruction. To the Keelax, humanity is a nuisance that must be curtailed. To thinkers like Paul Ehrlich, who authored The Population Bomb, we are an unruly plague. The 1960s and 70s ignited the population growth concern as organizations like the United Nations established their population fund, and the birth control pill was legalized in the U.S. Additionally, mass mandatory sterilization efforts were implemented in India after pressure and funding from the World Bank convinced them to curb their surging population. Today, China and India have the largest populations in the world. In the case of China, population control entered into effect in 1980 in the form of the one-child policy. This policy prevented 400 million undesired births, according to the Chinese government, and was finally abolished in 2015. In the United States, abortion, as endorsed by Roe v. Wade, prevented 63 million people from contributing to population increase over the course of roughly 50 years. Sterilization is an example of what many anti-population control advocates label as draconian, to thinkers like Julian Simon, population reduction is actually counterproductive, as he theorized that with an increase in people would come a greater abundance of technological and scientific advancements, leading to a more enriched society. Mr. Simon believed in humanity's creative capacity to respond and adapt to a growing globe with new resources and new technologies to adjust to any potential losses. He proposes in his 1981 book, The Ultimate Resource, that if an essential item does become scarce, then its price will increase, leading to a search for better alternatives. In essence, the population will never truly outpace resources because we, as a highly adaptive and economically driven species, will keep making ways to stay alive and maintain our standards of living. A statement by Bill Gates that became controversial in his 2010 TED Talk centers around Stage 3 of the Demographic Transition Model, which is a documentation of the evolution of population and demographics through the years. Mr. Gates said, well, The world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Some have interpreted this to mean that Mr. Gates wants to eliminate our current population through targeted vaccine extermination and abortion, which is commonly called a reproductive health service, which would eerily fit the Key Lack Queen's statement and destroy all monsters. Others interpret Mr. Gates to be making a positive statement about the living conditions in society being so ideal, with vaccines leading to less death and higher standards of living, that people won't feel as much of a need to have children. Interpret this statement how you will, but remember to always have a healthy skepticism of what famous figureheads have to say. What Destroy All Monsters touches on, and what crazy kaiju fans like me probably make into a bigger deal than they were intended to be, is a persisting issue in society and politics today. Is it good to sacrifice human lives, whether current or future, for the sake of a more utopian and scientific society? Are practices like mass sterilization, eugenics, abortion, infanticide, and discouragement of women from homemaking and motherhood ultimately beneficial for the human race? Or are there darker motives and more detrimental side effects that we don't really know about or think about? I'll let you decide. 
Personally, I am not of the belief that the Earth currently possesses a set carrying capacity, although overcrowding, pollution, and degraded living standards certainly exist in major cities and other densely populated areas of the world. Unplanned pregnancies are seldom ideal as well and can lead to dangerous situations, trauma, and abortions, which are always saddening to me. Part of the Family Planning Initiative and the United Nations population efforts include educating women and encouraging them to pursue careers in place of motherhood. Replacing motherhood with career pursuit unfortunately glosses over the feminine desire to create and nurture, and may lead to regrets later in life. Typically, it is a more masculine urge to be accomplished, competitive, and successful, whereas considerably more women are happier to assume caretaking roles. This is not a blanket statement, everyone has their path in life. But the idea of discouraging motherhood for the sake of a lower population doesn't sit right with me. At the end of the day, as long as our governments don't implement extermination tactics or commit Nazi-ish atrocities for ethnic cleansing or population control like the Kelax, I suppose I will remain somewhat neutral on the topic. The society we have now needs help in many ways. It may be helpful to focus instead on our current people and current problems, instead of worrying about reducing the amount of future people living in the world. Thanks for watching everyone, take care of yourselves, and may the geek be with you.